Okay, here comes the section on Naismith's rule. This is important stuff. So, so far on our root card, we know that we've worked out our, um, our legs of our root, which includes a name and a grid reference, and make sure that your name is something clearly marked on the map, if possible. You've worked out our general direction. We've calculated our distance now by one of our, using our three methods. We've done our height climb by working out the contours, remembering that you add on for when you go up, you don't take anything off for going down, but you always add on if you go back up the hill again, as with our little graph just here. You add on for when you go up, you don't take anything off for going down, but you need to make sure that you add on. So we talked in this instance of 20 metres, so starting at 10, going up to 20, that's 10 up, ignore that, and you're going up from 0 to 10 again. Now, what we've got here on our uh, Willstead walk, we've got our first leg, and we've already measured off the distance, and we've said it's 2.5 kilometres. So, Mr. Nathanus was an army general, and what he figured out is that he did lots of expeditions, and he worked out the most efficient way of calculating how long it would take his troops to walk, and therefore what time they'd need to want to finish, with a bit of um, space for daylight, and then also then, therefore, what time they would start. So, what Nathanus worked out is that, to start with, he created a grid, uh, and he worked out the distance that the average pace was of the group, and when you walk without big bags on, so without expedition sacks, I would say going at 4 km pH, so 4 kilometers per hour. What we've got here then is I've created a, a little uh, chart for us to fill in the table. 4 kilometers at 4 kilometers an hour, time, and we're going to go in minutes here, that would be therefore 60, and hopefully you've already done this on the board with me. 2 kilometers therefore, we just half that, don't we? So that's going to be 30. One kilometer, we're going to half that. Now, what we're going to say um, is, well, that one's clearly 15. When we get down to halving it again, so this isn't complicated maths, it's just functional maths, isn't it? Um, half of one kilometer, and therefore half of 15. Let's go seven. We don't need to pay 0.5 because that makes it a bit confusing. Then we've got 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. So we've got options, haven't we? Um, you could, I suspect the best way of doing it is going from one kilometer to down to 0 0.1, and that's just moving one decimal place. So one kilometer is a thousand meters. So rather than um, us going from um, trying to do any, any difficult calculations, all we need to be able to do is one kilometer um, is going to be um, one point, well, we'll do, let's tell you what. We've gone down from 2 kilometres to 1 kilometre to 0 0.5 kilometres. If you're going from there to there, let's do that calculation. So you've got 1.5 and you need to move it down. Um, so 15 um, and move in the decimal place, that will be 1.5 minutes. Okay, which in, in fact we're going to call 90 seconds because there's 60 seconds in a, mi in a minute, isn't there? So we'll just put 90 seconds or 1.5 just there. Two would therefore just be double that, and therefore that would be three, wouldn't it? Three minutes. Now, what Naismith also worked out is for the things like getting over styles, tying up shoelaces, um, having a bit of a look at the map, you add on 10 minutes of rest per hour. So your rest breaks, if you were traveling for one hour and it taken 60 minutes for traveling, you'd also add on another 10. Um, half an hour, therefore you'd add on five. Now these ones, let's say we're going to add on just two minutes for that, um, and we'll go for one for those, just because, and we wouldn't add any to that. We don't want to overcomplicate things completely. So if you were travelling for four kilometres, and you were doing it at four kilometres an hour, you'd say, yes, it would be 60 minutes, plus you do your rest breaks as well. Okay, so let's look at our first leg then on our route. Um, what we've got is we know we've got... 2.5 kilometers. So using our sheet here, and I'm going to do it on leg here, we've said distance 2.5. Therefore, we can add up a 2, which is a 30 minute, and a 0.5 is 7. So that is going to be 37 time for travel. Then what we're going to do is we need to add on our rest. So we know that we need to add on 5 minutes for our rest. And we also need to add on for our height gain. So for height gain, what you do is you add on one minute for every 10 metres. One minute per 10 metres gained. So in this instance, what we're going to do is we know that for leg one of this route, we start at 35, we went up to 90 and we didn't drop down anything. So it's 55 metres. Um, 
55 meters if it's 10 minutes if it's uh, one minute for every 10 minutes 10 meters is going to be 5.5 so what we'll actually say is five minutes and then for our total leg then 37 plus five plus five there's lots of ways of doing it isn't it i'd add those together so i'd say 10 and 37 that's 47 minutes and that's where it goes in here so we've got 55 minutes for our height uh, sorry 55 meters of height gain so your time allowed for journeying was your 2.5 um kilometers which we worked out here as taking 37 minutes okay so that's that bit there time allowed for um exploring and rests well what we've got there is we know that we've got five minutes because it's about half an hour of journey time then we've got height gain of five um and because that's your from there so we're going to put plus five for height and then the total for that would be 47. This end column here is once you know the start time, um, if you know your start time, let's say we were starting at nine o'clock in the morning, it would be 9.47 would go in that end leg. But if you don't know what time you're starting, you don't have to fill that column until afterwards.